there's been enough said and written about the group of seven to last us all a lifetime, but music inspired by it, with fresh eyes and ears, and using the language it knows best, the rock band, the Rio Statics, has created new music from old paintings. Hold on to that for $2 admission into the gallery to come and see the group of seven. Unlikely tour mates for a rock band, these painters have plenty of road experience, and for the past year, the Art for a Nation exhibition has their paintings and the Rio Statics music touring together. Maybe in the beginning, I didn't think there was, we had anything in common. A bunch of old guys going up in a boxcar, you know, portraying the country, but there's lots in common. a bunch of dead painters and a rock band have in common? Well, they're artists, they're Canadian, they share geography. But when you share geography in this country, you have a lot in common. So why did the National Gallery commission this band for the Group of Seven project? An urban Toronto group with a sound like no one else, rabid fans right across the country, critics have burdened this band with the label nationalistic, but that's okay with them. Dave Bedini, Martin Tielli, Tim Vesely and Don Kerr are a big part of a musical revolution that proved rock and roll in Canada doesn't have to sound like it came from somewhere else, and that's why the National Gallery called them. Known for pushing a tired old musical form into positions no one knew existed, Rio Statics are building a reputation much like these revolutionary Canadian artists. They came together in 1920 as the Group of Seven. They left the established art world behind and set out to invent a national art and to nurture an atmosphere of acceptance for Canadian artists. They believed that without faith in Canadian creativity, you couldn't have a Canada. We know the names, Harris, McDonald, Lismer, Barley, Jackson, Carmichael, Johnston, Many different painters were associated with the collective over the years, and all of them owed a great deal to Tom Thompson. Thompson died before the Group of Seven even had a name, but he was their muse, their guide and interpreter. He first brought them to Ontario's Algonquin Park. He'd only been painting for five years when he mysteriously drowned. It was Thompson who had the vision, first caught the spirit of this brilliant new world. Back to the present and the McMichael Gallery in Ontario. You like to look at the brush strokes, don't you? Yeah, what you see how it's for? done. The real statics yeah, revisit the pictures they remember from school trips Bloody long colors. ago. And wherever they go, these guys are rock stars. You know, this is going to seem even cheesier because you write one Whose pen is this? Agents, really? yeah. This kind of recognition of homegrown talent is something the group of seven dreamt about and worked for. <laughs> they rule. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. You worked too long. For their disc, music inspired by the group of seven, these rock stars have taken a backseat to the paintings. Leaving words behind, the album is almost entirely instrumental, a soundscape for landscapes. There's an affinity between the two groups of artists that makes this project feel more like an actual collaboration with the Group of Seven than a tribute. And from the beginning, the band has had definite ideas about the music. It definitely didn't have to sound like those New Age loon tapes you buy in those <laughs> places up north off the highway. You they put them the on. Display stands. Yeah, didn't, wasn't supposed to sound like that. It should, ha yeah, like it, it would, we wanted to give it kind of a rugged, ruggedness, I guess. 
the ruggedness that they know from camping, writing, and painting in Algonquin Park. Sky's starting to bruise, eh? What? Sky's starting to bruise. Uh, That's what Gord Downey says, bruising sky. They feel connected to this place. That's not so strange. Lots of us do. Something in the Canadian temperament is seduced by this imposing wilderness. We don't feel lost in it. Instead, our landscape grounds us. I don't want people to think that our, our thing with the Group of Seven is some sort of light little um, documentation about how, you know, how keen and Canadian they are. It's about how like vigilant they were in their work and about how powerful and weird the land and how, how it can really change the way you look at the country, the way to look at your, you, you look at yourself too. I think they put that down on their canvas and we put it into our song. The group of seven found a way to work together, to share common goals and celebrate the individuality of each artist. The band felt a rush of recognition when it discovered this quote by the group written in 1921. We have no group formula and are conscious of widely divergent aims. We have as little desire to be revolutionary as to be old fashioned. We chose it because we, we identify with that also. We're as interested in old music as, as new and I don't think I mean, it's always fun to, to think you're discovering something or presenting something in a new way, but that, that does not make quality, you know, that doesn't make good art. You never read against two, they're rebels, you know, in the first couple of exhibits, most contemporary critics and people in, in the city were up in arms, they didn't like it, you know, because it was too strong. Like any rock band up for punishment and adventure, the Group of Seven toured this country by boxcar, not only to paint, but to show its work. It wasn't always welcome, but the group was determined that every Canadian, rural and urban, should have a chance to see the work, and every town held a tough new audience. we went across on our first tour in um, a small car towing a, a rented U-Haul with our equipment in the back and stuff. How did the wilderness or how did um, northern Ontario, those images first strike me when we went up there in the car and like, and, and they had lasting effects on our music, the stuff, music we wrote after we went on that first tour. So we kind of had to go back, reel back a little bit in our minds to, and try to rethink the, the, the kind of power and the impact that uh, the country, the landscape had on our art and I guess us on people, uh, as people.